Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now, we thought that we beat the game in the last episode because we saved Miles Edgeworth. We saw the credits roll, but at the very end, there was an episode five. I have no idea what it's going to be about, but we are about to jump into it right now. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up because here we go. Whoa. All right. Starts off with some actual, like, moving parts. Okay. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Uh oh, he got the night bull. About to end the light bulls. Whoa. Wait, two people? Two separate night bulls? I'm confused now. Who the hell is you? Wait, episode 5's already starting off real action-packed. It's been two months since Maya left the office. Oh, Maya! Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that girl showed up. What girl? She cute? February 22, 10.02 a.m. Ryan and Cole Law Offices. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are, finally! Where have you been? Who the hell is you? My sister's trial is tomorrow! Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey. Oh, uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? Do I look like a Mia Fey? Do I look like a freaking Mia Fey? I'm sorry, but Miss Mia Fey no longer works here. So you are the coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. Wait, you're the Phoenix Wright? <laughs> yeah, you know. The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. That's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. But you are Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Undefeated, yup. Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. And I'm not accepting L's. That's why I'm undefeated. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please. I'm out of time. But please, you have to help me. It's my sister. Maya? Could it be? Nah, no way. Okay, I'll hear you out. Really? Thank you so much. My name's Emma, Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? What that is? Okay, let's talk to Emma Sky. Emma, was it? So you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just you seem kind of, uh, jumpy, or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. Whoa! Forget about me asking if she was cute! Hold up! Hold up now! Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? Yeah, Phoenix, back off, buddy. I'm set to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known, at my age, no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position, then? Well, legally speaking... I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job, at my age no less. Great, another future professional in training. Okay, the case. So what's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife, she wouldn't. So it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. <laughs> Just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right. I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Fey, but... That's interesting. How would she know Mia? Okay, let's talk about her being a scientific investigator at only 16 years old. Come on now. So, you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up then? Excuse me? 
I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a goal, albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure, can't fault her for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. Okay, before we do that, we gotta talk about the relation to Mia. My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Fey person was a few years below her in school. So they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. And, well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. She's a scientist. She can put her own experiment on if Mia's a guy's name. What the hell's wrong with this girl? Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? But, but she's my only family. Your only family? What about your parents? Yeah, your Maja and your Faja. They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. Damn, Maja and Faja died in the car crash? No way, no way. Alright, we are gonna go to the detention center. And we're gonna see what she looks like. Maybe she's cute. You never know, guys. February 22nd, detention center visitor's room. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Guard! I thought I told you I didn't want visitors! Uh, sorry, ma'am! It's just your sister! No excuses! Or did you not want to raise this year, hmm? Understood, ma'am! What was that all about? What? She can't even look at us? Come on, lady! Do a 180, look at me! Uh, hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing? Look, I don't want to come here either, okay? But your trial is tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Oh, man, maybe you should have kept turned around. Yikes. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, what exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana, Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. You're a prosecutor? Of course she is, because why wouldn't she be? She looked like she got like 80 million medals of honor. Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma, Lana, I mean, they're just like, yeah, me and Maya. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? No. Um, let's talk about the case, though. There's something you should know from the start. Which is? The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? Wait, but the suspect... The suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, February 21, at 5.15 p.m. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor office, huh? In your subordinate's car trunk? Classy. I was arrested on the spot, caught red-handed, as it were. Well, that's just great. Okay, why is she confessing so hard? So, who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. Detective Gumshoe? Big Dick Gumshoe? A detective. Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. God damn, baby. By you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. What, Mr. Wright? What does it mean? Well, it means that you're screwed! The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. 
They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. Yeah, Phoenix always gets screwed, man. Everything's always against him so hard. So, you're the chief prosecutor? That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. That's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this? I cut myself by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. Why is she lying so hard, guys? Like, everything obviously sounds like a lie. Who is she covering up for? How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Relation to Mia. Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her? Emma told you that too, did she? Well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey! It was in law school. I was in my third year and she was auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. Anything? That was probably why she was attracted to me. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, she wasn't attracted to Phoenix? Intellectually attracted. Lana was top of her class in school. I was the best there was. Oh. I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright? Excuse me? As you can plainly see, I am admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say, there's no way you can take this case. None. Uh, but Lana... Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know! So... So how can you say you did? If I lose you... I'll be all alone. I... I hate you, Lana! Yeah, that's your fault. Yeah, turn back around. Nobody want to see that face. Mr. Wright? Yes? I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest, I leave to you. Um, you mean you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Well, obviously, we know that she didn't do anything. We just got to prove that she didn't do anything. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes? But something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here. And I'm going to find out what. Yeah, you are, Phoenix Wright. Because you're always right. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know? I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out this underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Okay. Alright, let's move. Let's go to the underground parking lot. February 22nd, prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work. Hey, what are you thinking? Well, they're going to be my co-workers three years from now after all. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes? I'm trying not to stand out too much here, see? Hey there! You expecting to go unnoticed here, partner? Partner? Oh, howdy, partner! What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Folks gotta learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. Mr. Marshall? Marshall? Looks more like a sheriff to me. Looks more like a douchebag! Look at here, Bambina. 
I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim, our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If you're fixing a mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti on the desert dream? You want to? What's this guy talking about? You head along home now. Happy trails, Bambina. All right, later, completely random cowboy guy. Was that a hombre, a friend of yours? Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah, he's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems? What in the world? Alright, whatever, man, let's examine this crime scene. So many wacky cast of characters. What's this? A wallet? Excuse me, officer! Wait, what are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. Yeah, you're supposed to open it, Phoenix, and check if there's money, and then pocket it for yourself. Come on, rookie! I don't believe it. This is really basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. There you go. Thinking like a true criminal, just like your old pal Jay. How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. Wallet hastily stuffed into pocket. A foldable wallet found at the crime scene. There seems to be something inside. I'm called to duty already and at my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way her eyes are sparkling, I can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay, okay now. Look at the court record. Okay. And then? Oh wait, are you going to explain to me then I do it? Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, she did that for me. You have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides. Now, let's start examining from every angle. Um, oh my goodness, that is so cool. I mean, I know like rotating stuff is basic now in video games, but the fact that we can do this in an Ace Attorney game, is just blowing my mind. It's making me go, oh! So I see something right here. So how do we do that? Click on it. Oh, rotate for H and M B M. What kind of random ass characters is that? Okay, let's zoom in. And then let's rotate this bad girl again. There's something right there. How do I open that? Oh, look! I think there might be a clue here. You should check it out with the press of enter. Okay. Enter. Ooh, we opened it. There we go. This, this is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID number... Yeah, I'm not reading that. See? Well... Isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Yeah, you're just examining a wallet front to back. Come on now, you don't need to be a scientist and all that. I should slap you silly. I should slap you with the wallet. Goodman's ID added to the court record. An investigator's ID card found at the prosecutor's office crime scene. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. Oh, we can slide. <gasps> Nice! Okay, there's a cell phone here. Well, no time to waste. Let's go hunting for clues. Huh, I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. He's still shaving with a knife? Come on, dog. The sheriff! Like I said before, this here's our claim. You best be mosing along, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Go! Scary! Yeah, because he's pointing two fingers at you. So scary. Could you just tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well. The little filly's got a good nose on her. You want to know who rides the red Mustang with a body in her saddle, eh? Please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the prospector's office. Might just find you a cerveza you like. Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? And when, for that matter? Note to self. Look up Vittles Saloon Cerveza. Maybe we should check out room 1202, the high prosecutor's office. But there was a cell phone on the ground. I need to check, you know, whose DMs he was sliding into. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like, just keep your paws off our claim. Right, great. Alright, see you later, partner. Great! Maybe there's some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. Excuse me? Were you two all set? Us? Who's this? 
Whoa! Hey, how you doing? She look like she got those onigiris on top of her head. What's this? She couldn't be. You're selling lunches? Here? This is a crime scene. Whoa, what is that? Hello! Half and half, was it? Oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? Yes? Ooh, that looked good. Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance. Especially passersby. Or are you officers? Uh, no, but you... You don't exactly look like the type to have clearance. Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even in my days as the cough-up queen are over. Cough-up? Uh-huh. You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned into my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Dear me, you are a slow one, aren't you? Oh, she looking evil. I'm referring to the murder, the stabbing of that detective. What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Oh, that was her on a geary head? You mean you're the witness my sister was talking about? Please, cough up, queen. Tell us what happened. The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Yes, ma'am. Yipes, she means it. Okay, cough up, queen. Let's talk about the case. Somehow, I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was gonna happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. Destiny? Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. Evil ones? Prosecutors! They have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave an award for King of Prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying there was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. I was almost compelled to lace the lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, um, evil? Young miss, mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the cough-up queen. Uh -huh. The most heinous of the evil ones, the ones they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. Really? Really what? I'm totally confused. Yeah, me too. Are you guys confused? I'm confused. One thing's clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. What you witnessed. So, what exactly was it that you witnessed, Miss Star? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Sky wield the knife so... Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. You mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second, you know Lana Sky? Huh, of course. It's quite a feat, becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunch boxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now, why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Whoa, pretty is a stretch. She ain't that pretty. Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Miss Star? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? No. Only true connoisseurs can understand. The kind you can only tell someone who has tried General So's Trilobite lunch set. What is this lady talking about? Ah, oh, never mind, you win. I don't even want to appreciate part of a trilobite's flavor. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. 
Your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass walled booth? I sell my lunches and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So, to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Miss Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis, not. And prosecutor's office. Did you have a bad experience with the prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? <laughs> Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like 10 day old clams in the chowder. I wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past? That'd be a sure cause of food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking, cough up queen. I thought she was just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, what else are we gonna do? Should we move? To, oh, High Prosecutor's Office. February 22, High Prosecutor's Office. Room 1202. Wait, is this Edgeworth's office? Is this Edgy Boy? This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. A trophy? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display something like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck-up jerk. Phoenix Wright. You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice. Edgy boy? Edgy boy! Let's go! Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Oh! Mr. Edgeworth, I know. I'd fangirl too if I was in Edgeworth's office. You know him from somewhere? Of course. I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> Up top, girl. My sister introduced us once and... Right. Her sister is the chief prosecutor after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you. I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. No. Did I? No. It was just Mr. Wright here. He... Hey! Don't blame me! We were just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? A body was found in this nasty, bright red sports car in the parking lot. Hmm? That would be my car. What of it? Why is he looking like that? Why is he giving us those eyes? What? Your car? I'll say one thing. She certainly can scream. Okay, edgy boy. Let's talk about the case. So, the body was found in your car? Go ahead, say it right. You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less. No, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean... Wait, so you're the chief prosecutor's little sister then? Yes, sir, Emma Sky. It, uh... It's nice to meet you again. Now that didn't sound forced at all. Ah, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit, it was a surprise for me too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still. I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand. Wait, what did you say? Lana Sky is the chief prosecutor. The top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You? Mr. Edgeworth... Okay, Edgeworth, let's talk about you. To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumors about this guy. Oh yeah, the iconic... Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Oh yeah, he had that gun, son. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy! Huh. Some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. That's so true. But... Some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's got to be a story behind that one. 
Okay, let's talk about Lana Sky. Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes. We first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago, I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. Mistaken? Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife! What?! Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Edgeworth's knife added to the court record. The murder weapon, usually in Edgeworth's toolbox, traces a victim's blood, no prints. Um, Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? Come on, can he take a joke? You have a strange sense of humor, Mr. Wright. He got that dark humor, you know? He got that edgy humor, edgy boy. Okay, we're gonna check this. And we are gonna rotate that. Oh, look at that rotation. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Check that. This must be the victim's blood, right? Either that, or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? <laughs> to stab people, you know? Like people who accuse him, just, you know, give a little stabby stabby. Hey, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. Edgeworth, in the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. Now there's a scary thought. Okay, is that it? Um, yeah. Okay, there's nothing else on the knife. I checked the only thing that we could check. So, guess we gotta go out. And now what? Can we talk to Edgy? No, I don't want to look at Edgy's knife. I want to look at Edgy. Let's get out of here. And we can't even talk. Okay, let me examine. Let's examine this trophy. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Yes, that's for kill of prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the king of prosecutors trophy. King of prosecutors? It's a great honor. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for king. Yeah, you got a problem with that? No, my king. You can do whatever you want, my king. I didn't design the thing. King of prosecutors, kind of like employee of the month, only better. King of prosecutors trophy added to the court record. Given to Edgeworth, king of prosecutors at the PD on the day of the murder. Okay, so we're going to check this one out too. Let's examine this bad boy. And I like this feature, this rotating feature. Hey, check it out. There's a metal plate here. Hmm, it looks like the names of all the previous recipients are engraved on it. Wow, one guy's listed a bunch of times. Von Karma! I guess he must be a foreigner? Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Well, wherever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor and an amazing murderer! I'd like to meet this Mr. Von Karma sometime. Yeah, well, go to your local prison. When she says it, his name does have a kind of ring to it. Is that it? That's it? No. Come on, there's gotta be more avidance. Let me zoom in. Let's see this. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Alright, that's pretty much it. Let's back out. And what else are we gonna do? Are we gonna examine anything else? Steel Samurai! My, my, my! What an amazing bouquet! Just right for Mr. Edgeworth. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead. Wendy? Wendy? I've heard that name somewhere before. Wait, Wendy? And beside it, a giant steel samurai. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. <gasps> oh, the one with the big jugs that I was looking in the hotel? Okay. Wow, I want one. I didn't know Edgy Boy was smashing that. Huh? There's something written on the bottom of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place. Wendy. Wendy? Is she Mr. Edgeworth's fiance? Oh, Wendy! Oh, she ain't the one with the big jugs? She's the one with the old saggy jugs! Um, I don't think so. Okay, can I show you this? So, basically, this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why is that? 
I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? Why does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award, for better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday? Yeah, let's do it. Finally, we're getting somewhere. The day of the crime. Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? Man, that sounds like a horrible day. Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Wiping your hands of old cases in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got... the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. That's very precise. People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Edgeworth's parking stub added to the court record. Record of parking in the prosecutor's office lot entered lot at 5.12 p.m. This is the parking stub from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back. What, right? I'd appreciate it if you'd direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um. What the? Bro, so many random people. Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here, sir. At the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Uh, Sky, sir! No, sir! No name of that kind, sir! Not on this report, sir! I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. Mr. Edgeworth's lid isn't on very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated! Sir! But, sir! I'm just following orders, sir! They told me to bring this to you! I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement with us, sir! Give me your name! Uh, yes! Yes, sir! I'm, uh, Meekins, sir! Officer Meekins! Right, Officer Meekins. Take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. you ain't gonna feed your family next month. Oh, but sir, I didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent the day they gave out brains and good luck. <laughs> Phoenix with the roasties. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. Let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective from the same department as the patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, thanks. He seems to have finally calmed down at least. Okay, thank you, edgy boy. Why can't we be partners with Edgeworth? You know? Like, just be a good duo. Where else are we moving to? Police department entrance. February 22nd, police department entrance. Whew, we're finally here. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? Beats me. That took almost 30 minutes by taxi, and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to the criminal affairs next door. Hmm? Hold on, what's that? Disturbing? Why does it undulate like that? Oh, wait, I know. This is the Blue Badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Well, they're doing a horrible job. Wow, Mr. Wright, you sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the Blue Badger. Who's that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the Blue Badger. Uh-oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. Hey, pal! What are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Um, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. 
This is our chance to get info. Hey! I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. Okay, well, talk to me. Talk to me about the case. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. Why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal. There's plenty of evidence against her. But what if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal. Can I speak to you for a second? Aren't you already doing that? Huh? Me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir! Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just, it's a sensitive issue with us these days. The investigation. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then, what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with my sister's case and all. It's true. We never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being led into criminal affairs now. The lowest rankings guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us ranked and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall? Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of the crime scene. It's unheard of, pal! Uh, what about this guy? Um, Detective Gumshoe? What can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey, pal! This is a detective's ID card! You can't just keep that! You have to turn it into the police! It's people like you that got me into so much trouble all the time. Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Hmm, let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman? Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. But didn't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, tell us more. So, this ID card belonged to the victim? He was a detective, like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm, don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transferal for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transferal? Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but... Word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot. And Lana's confessing as much. Okay. What now? Do I show the knife? Found a Mr. What? Huh? Wait, it showed the ticket and then it showed the knife. I don't even know. Found a Mr. Edgeworth's car. Stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course. Someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um... Someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Okay, you know what? I feel like it's that girl selling all those Japanese foods. Oh, we gotta talk about Edgeworth's troubles. He's in a tough spot. Again. Again. Oh, yeah, that whole thing. We solved that, man. We aced that. Ace attorney that. Well, it all started with the murder of that defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal. There have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with the witnesses. Nothing outright, 
but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They're practically shouting. But, but there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. Okay. Can I move now? Like, please. I can't talk anymore. So where the hell do I go? Yeah, guys, this is a long investigation. Wow. Losing my voice. But we are back at the underground parking lot. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. I'll see you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh, her. <laughs> oh, still here. Uh, hello. Why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guard? Damn, she a playgirl. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost his herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Okay, I gotta present you this. Take that! Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, fan letters to me go right in the spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe. Oh, that old cow doll? Hmm. He holding a birthday party, son? Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. Ah, I think he just miswrote it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries, this proves it's from Detective Gumshoe better than a blood test. Guess I'd better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. Oh, that's right, he's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or higher? Well, folks, the clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for the lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hoot nanny. Note to self, police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Detective Gumshoe's letter of introduction crumpled and discarded. Okay, so now we can slide. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the thing I wanted to check. This cell phone right here. This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Yes, of course. Duh, come on, Phoenix. Right, let's check it out. Okay, time to examine this. What? It did it by itself. What the heck? Ghost investigation. Okay, right here. Huh, this phone's still on the redial screen. Man, a lot of you guys watching this have probably never seen a flip phone like this. You guys were still in your daddy's ball sack when this came out. Redial. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright? Most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, you never know with people from your generation. Whatever. Let's check this phone out. Let's see who the last caller was. Come on. Call it. Now, to see who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, a defense attorney doesn't think first. He just pushes the button. <laughs> that is an awesome ringtone. Hey, that song! I know that! Hey! What's going on over there? Uh, uh, sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this anyway? It was on the ground over there. Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prosecutor Sky. 
What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now, I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ringtones. Oh, that? Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. What? Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but... Someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. A wrong number. I hope you're not lying. That's awfully suspicious. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Aren't you from West LA? Uh-oh. I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Cell phone added to the court record. Property of Lana Sky. Last call made at 518 on the day of the murder. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Um, wait, there was one more thing to look at. It was right here. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, something's written on it. 675-12-2. You're right. Let's see. 67S. Oh, 67S. That looked like a 5. 67S-12-2. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, so, what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self. For deductive reasoning, go to Edgeworth, not Wright. <laughs> what a bitch! I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Goodman's note added to the court record. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feisty doggy there now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 515. Smiling Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stab to the chest. A fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report. There we go, we finally got an autopsy report. Death due to loss of blood. One knife wound. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prosecutor Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on the case a few years back. So, there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why he didn't do much work with Chief Prosecutor. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here, to this parking lot? So it seems like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about Marshall. Um, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman now. So how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does a Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his own tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth. That cow dog's been kicked out of his cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he don't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation. And Lana Sky. So, there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but... There's a gold mine of evidence against her. And the prospect of tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall! Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Is there something between the cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gone to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's a-blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will, someone is up to something here, but who? Office atmosphere. Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forced evidence and arranging testimonies, you mean? 
He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to the source, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets. Some people load them with deals. What? You're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? When there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off this case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? Am I supposed to know it? <laughs> I like it, but am I supposed to know it? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? Oh, okay. I don't remember hearing that. That popular TV show for kids? The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. It was yours. At 518, just after the murder took place. Your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry! Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. Cell phone updated in the court record. Property of Lana Sky. Last call made to her sister Emma at 518 on the day of the murder. A detective is murdered and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. To be continued. Woo! Man! That was so long. That was a lot of talking, but it was worth it. We met a bunch of new characters. We have good evidence, but I feel like it's not strong evidence. But that's why we're about to go into the trial tomorrow so we can figure out more of the truth. If you guys want to see that as soon as possible, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is dead too!